technical innovation has always been a core component of the Royal Navy. On the 10th of January 1912, Lieutenant Charles Sampson flew the first biplane from the deck of an adapted battleship and so the first aircraft carrier was born. Used for reconnaissance missions, ship-deployed aircraft played a key role during the First World War and at the Battle of Jutland they gathered vital intelligence on the movement of the German fleet. In 1918, the first aircraft carrier, HMS Argus, was commissioned and was fitted with a full-length flight deck and hangar capable of accommodating up to 20 aircraft. Carrier innovation continued rapidly and by the Second World War, carriers were at the head of operations. In May 1943, during the Battle of the Atlantic, 36 Fleet Air Arms Squadrons flew some of the most hazardous missions imaginable during the campaign. Post-war innovation included the use of steam catapults to launch heavier jets, an angled deck, mirror landing sites for faster recovery, and a ski jump designed for the first sea harrier. In July 2008, the UK government signed a contract for two new aircraft carriers. HMS Queen Elizabeth and HMS Prince of Wales are to be the largest warships ever to be constructed for the Royal Navy. Using the latest technology and jet fighters available, these innovative carriers will serve as flagships of the Royal Navy for decades to come. The Queen Elizabeth aircraft carrier is an awesome ship. It's 280 metres long, 70 metres wide. It's an airfield. It's four acres of real estate and it'll have a crew of 680. It'll house up to 1,600 people if required. A lot of the technology that's gone into the ship, a lot of the work we're doing, British companies coming up with British designs, which uh, goes into a British ship. Effectively, we can visualise and see the repercussions of decisions that we're going to be making in the design stage before we're committing into cut and steel. And for something this size, there was not one particular shipyard that could do this job. So we've actually put an all-star team together, if the truth's known, uh, working simultaneously to build such a fantastic ship. most exciting part of the project for me was when the main generators went in. There's 146 tonnes each. It wasn't fingers crossed because I knew it would fit. When the block was ready to go to get shipped down to the south was just unbelievable the size of it. So it was like, we made that, you know, it was just exciting and that is a diamond sort of moment that we all enjoy. The exciting part was when we tied them down onto the barge and then we see them going out onto the river and on the way to Ross Eye to be put together. LBO2 rollout, 6,000 tonnes coming out onto the barge, absolutely amazing. It filled the whole hall here in Portsmouth. And then suddenly to see it out in the sunshine onto the barge was amazing. And you can imagine just even the transportation, logistics of getting those blocks from that site up to Ross Eye. The most exciting part of this project, tell you, was the uh, first block arriving and going into the dock, then having to skid the blocks together, which when you're moving 26,000 tonne to within six millimetres of another block was tremendous. When we loaded out Lord Block 4, Ship 1, we were taking 10,000 tonnes of steel, something the size of a football pitch, six storeys high, and then rolling it onto a barge. It was a, a really momentous day probably the most absolutely interesting part was when the forward island, UB07, came up to Rosyth from Portsmouth. Then seeing it actually fitted onto the ship, you could start to see the structure come together for the very first time. I think it changed the whole shape of the carrier. It looked like a bit of a flat top barge up until that point and then suddenly UB07 was on there and it just gave you that iconic profile that you're expecting to see from a carrier. It's probably one of the biggest systems integration tasks that the UK have ever seen. Just the sheer volume of cable that we're installing on board. If you laid it out in a straight line, it would reach almost from London to Gibraltar, uh, with data and information travelling at the speed of light for the length and breadth of the ship. It's a masterpiece in engineering. It's absolutely tremendous. And it shows the world that we can do this. Shipbuilding is alive, it's thriving. It shows what we can do. It shows that we are still at the forefront of engineering around the world. I hope that the millions who see her are as awed and inspired by her as I was when I worked on her as an apprentice. I would wish the people of the UK to look upon this project as their project as well. It's not just ours, this is for the nation and for the future. I feel incredibly proud to have been part of the QEC programme. To know that she'll be protecting the nation for the next uh, 50 years is an incredible thing. 
it has been my life shipbuilding and it's one of the best things you could ever do, finish your, your, your career on a ship like this.